Hey, welcome to D-Lab, everybody. I've got a real interesting problem here on the bench. A fellow brought me this Fender Bandmaster. He told me what's happening is the amp plays fine, but if he's on channel 2 or the vibrato channel and he adjusts the volume on channel 1, there's interaction. And at sometimes he gets kind of a hiss and a swooping action by simply moving the pot. So I was checking into it, I found something really cool. I gotta show you before I fix it. All right, let me explain the test setup. There's no signal applied to the amp. My scope is connected to the 0.047 coupling cap that goes to the volume control on channel one, okay? I have my oscilloscope set up down here with a separate camera so you can see what I'm seeing. It's very weird but I think I know what the problem is. Right, so here is the eyelet board of the Bandmaster. You can see that it's pretty much untouched. Still has those old crusty Mallory caps. Still has those blue Ajax caps, all right? So here's your tone caps for channel one. Here's the coupling cap, the 0.047. So I'm monitoring at this point on my scope. On this side, of course, we have the plate voltage going to the 12AX7. So now let me cut to the other scope and you can see what I see. All right, we've got two video cameras going, one watching me, one watching my oscilloscope, okay? So if you take a look at the scope, you'll see the little dot going across, which should just be smooth because there's no signal applied, but watch the dot. See a little oscillation? The other night I was watching this and I had five to seven pulses and then it would stop. And then another five to seven and it would stop. It was almost timed. It was very strange. So that's when I got the idea to monitor right on this coupling cap as I tap. Okay? So watch the scope when I'm hitting this cap. You see that? See the sensitivity? See how I really made her jump? Just kind of rocking that cap around. It's causing all kinds of fun on the oscilloscope. So here's what I think is happening. You've got the 220 volts plate on one side of the cap. The cap's supposed to block DC, right? And the signal's on the other side. Well, I think that the cap has some strange leakage. Man, it's going nuts right now. I'll show you that. And I believe that it's charging and then it goes into an oscillation then the cap kind of recovers and it discharges and holds and it repeats. So it's probably just internal leakage. I mean, after all, it's a 60 year old cap, right? So here's the plan. First, I'm just gonna change that 0.047 cap and see if it cleans it up. And if it does, I'm already going to put in new electrolytics where those old Mallory's are at. But the rest of the caps, we're going to keep them in there. The guy wants this thing as original as possible. But I may have to change out that 1.047. Let's see what happens when I do. Right, I got the new Mallory cap installed and guess what? Take a look at the scope. It's even worse. <laughs> it's not what I expected. But look at that pulse. That is really strange. It's almost perfectly timed. So, before I do anything else, I'm going to change that input 12AX7. Let's see if it's some strange microphonic thing causing this. This is good, huh? All right, changed out the 12AX7. Hmm, we're a little bit of a squawk out of the speaker. But take a look. We still got, still got that strange oscillation on the scope. So there's obviously something else in that circuit. And no, the tremolo is not on. All right. Let me tap around here on the pin sockets. All right. So I tapped around. I can't seem to find anything sensitive. Okay. So the plan was to change out those dual Mallory cathode caps, the little 25 microfarad guys. So no, I'm not shotgunning but I'm going to change one at a time and let's see if this problem goes away. 
because it's still dancing around. I've made no improvements. So I'm going to put in the original 0.047 and we're going to change that Mallory since obviously the 0.047 was not causing this problem. So the new cathode caps on the 12AX7 made no difference. But when I was in here poking around, I made a little discovery. So this channel comes over here, right? And the two channels meet. They go through these 220K resistors through this cap to the inverter. Remember I told you he had some funny hiss and interaction. Listen when I push on this cap right here. Listen to the speaker. So that cap either has a poor connection or internally it's got damage and that may be feeding back into that channel causing that oscillation. Now let's take a look at the scope when I'm pushing on it, okay? Seems to be affecting it. So let's just change that cap. I changed out that cap with a mica style, but guess what? The noise is still here, but it's over here. Here? So I'm guessing it's this one meg resistor that has the issue. I know the solder connection is good, so the only other weak link could be this guy. Alright, let's change the one meg resistor. Alright, that was it. No more sensitivity, it must have been that one meg resistor was flaky. These carbon resistors do that. The leads become disconnected inside here where they contact the carbon. It can cause intermittence. And that is the loading resistor for the signal that comes in through the two channels that goes to the inverter. So I bet you that solved all of our issues. Time to take a look at the scope. Alright, so there's the scope. I'm monitoring that channel. See a little white noise on there. There's still some activity of that oscillation, but not even close to what it used to be. So that's a pretty good one, huh? You know, I have never actually probed the output of the preamp circuit in this manner. Normally, I just recap these amps listen to them, look at the output on the speaker for any distortion or issues. Normally I don't go all the way back to the preamp unless I'm troubleshooting an issue, which I was in this case. So I don't know if this little oscillation is just a trait of these preamp circuits. It's not audible. It's just there. I think the real problem was that cap and that one meg resistor on the inverter input. I think that's what was actually causing what he could hear. So this is a good one. I thought you guys would like it. I know I did. I learned quite a bit from this and I will check this in the future on other ramps and see if the same problem is there. We'll see.